Rabbi David Alevi Siegel, his Taz, he quotes Rabbi, no Asher, Rabbi Yaakov Ben Asher, that even if you say that fruits and cheeses require eating, da -da -da -da, drinking wine is also... And he quotes, okay, this is important for us, drinking wine is also a casual act of consumption. So Rabbi Siegel here is quoting Taz, quoting, his fa as quoting the tour, quoting his father, which, as we all know, ultimately gets into the Shulchan Aruch. Now he says... Now he, he starts to really poke at this. He says, it's inferable that even if one set oneself to drink wine, they are exempt from having to drink it with a sukkah. But he, this Ashiri glasses, it's these early medieval, uh, early Rishonim. He wrote, however, drinking wine, meat, and beer now, Hana, you asked earlier about other beverages. So far, we have only discussed so far tonight two beverages, wine and water. Everybody knows at this point, water is totally fine outside of the sukkah. Wine at this point is somewhat debatable. And now he's also mentioning, what about mead? What about beer? These are things that people drink. This is being quoted in the Hagos Ashiri. Oh, we're drinking wine, mead, and beer with fruits or with whatever. This company, I'm not going to get into all this, but maybe there's no drinking without eating, or maybe there are times when he eats all this stuff, but drinking his point is, does one always drink on its own, or do you need to have eating going on? It's also important that he mentions these other beverages. He quotes Rabbi Mordechai ben Abraham Yafi, wrote his Lavush, upon wine drinking, one who drinks to quench his thirst, but if establishing to drink a lot is in a fixed manner, you could have a lot. You could sit down to drink. He says, therefore, it seems that it's also fixed for a sukkah requires consumption within a sukkah, meaning if you have a lot of wine, maybe you do, maybe you have a volume question, a quantitative aspect that triggers the necessity to drink within a sukkah. Uh, he says, it's good to act stringently here. Uh, with regards to the blessing, it seems that one needs to bless upon fixed drinking of wine, since from the statutory obligation, one should bless each and every time. Now he's quoting the Gonim, except that they fix it to only bless upon eating. Now, so now he's the first to mention, does this now trigger a blessing? Once we already say wine drinking, especially in a fixed fashion, requires within a sukkah, maybe it also now triggers Lishi Basukah. Now, now this, there's the, the bracha question. To me, it seems that one should not bless Le Sheba Sukkah at all upon drinking, except in a set fashion. Do you ever say that, and that was sort of the, I feel like this is my pie in the Holy Grail, sort of trailing off at the end. Here at the bottom of the Hebrew, I'm sorry, I haven't fully translated this, but he says, what if you're, you're setting yourself, before you start eating, what if you're drinking whiskey before you begin your eating, Bim Dinos Elu, whoever talked about where are they in our countries. So he's talking about like Franco German, European stuff. He's like, what about in our countries? We drink whiskey before we start eating, as one does, right? That's right. More bang for your buck. Okay. So, right. You're, you're starting off. Th that, that's. How we do things in our countries, we start off our wheels with whiskey. But he says, look, in the Varek Klaw Rak Al Khilak Moshikasu the Sofa Simon. He says, look, at the end of the Shulchan Arach, look, just save the blessing on the drinking for the food. That's just what we do. That's our Ashkenazi custom. We'll keep things simple. He just Yeah. But at least he brought in what Lavush mentioned as far as once you have a certain amount, like really is wine always just a casual drinking? Or maybe sometimes we're set. Okay.